the forgotten heat trick that ended my compost turning forever and transformed my garden. If you've ever stood over a stubborn compost pile wondering why it just won't heat up, you're not alone. I spent years flipping, forking, and sweating over my compost, only to end up with patchy results and, well, a sore back. But everything changed the day I tried a thousand-year-old heating method that farms once relied on long before modern tools existed. The first time I used it, my pile heated so evenly and so quickly that I didn't turn it once, not once, and the compost that came out at the end was the richest, darkest material I've ever produced on Crop Corner. This old technique doesn't rely on fancy gadgets. It uses the natural heat generated inside your compost, then amplifies it with a clever airflow trick our gardening ancestors mastered, and yes, it works astonishingly well. How heat truly works inside a compost pile. Right after the introduction, let's get straight into what most gardeners misunderstand. Heat in compost doesn't come from turning. It comes from microbial metabolism. Tiny bacteria and fungi eat carbon and nitrogen, and in the process, they release energy. That energy is heat, the heart and engine of every successful compost system. Turning does help mix oxygen into the pile, but it also disrupts microbial colonies that are already hard at work. That's why you often see temperatures rise, then fall, then rise again. It's a roller coaster that slows decomposition. But when heat and airflow move through your pile naturally, without being disturbed, those microbes operate at full strength. That's where the thousand-year-old trick comes in. The ancient air-heated pipe system that replaced my turning fork. Gardeners centuries ago discovered that if you place hollow channels inside a compost heap, the heat generated at the center moves outward, pulling fresh oxygen in behind it. Today we recreate those channels using perforated PVC or drainage pipes. They act like natural radiators distributing warmth from the microbial hot zones through the entire pile. Instead of manually flipping compost to move oxygen around, the pipes do it continuously and gently. Warm air rises inside them, cooler air flows in, and your whole pile becomes an active, self-sustaining system that stays hot without collapsing or going anaerobic. Once I tried this I understood why turning suddenly felt unnecessary. Layering the pile for maximum heat power. To make this method work at its peak, the layering has to be intentional and balanced. What matters most is the ratio. You're aiming for one part nitrogen-rich green material to two or three parts carbon-rich brown material by volume. That balance creates the perfect fuel for steady microbial activity. Your greens include fresh grass food scraps, manure, and soft plant material. Your browns include dried leaves, sawdust, straw, shredded cardboard, and paper. When layered properly at about 4 to 6 inches thick per layer, and when each layer is lightly moistened, you instantly give your pile the structure it needs. Moisture is absolutely key. It should feel like a wrung-out sponge, never dripping. If it's too wet, your microbes suffocate, and if it's too dry, they starve. Using the pipe trick works beautifully only when moisture is steady from top to bottom. Why insulation turns this method into a powerhouse, adding a final insulating layer, straw, cardboard, or even a thin soil cap, locks in the heat your microbes produce. With the pipes distributing that heat evenly, insulation keeps it trapped inside the pile where it belongs. This stabilizes temperatures so well that even the outer edges begin decomposing with surprising speed. Instead of a cold crust around a hot core, you get uniform activity throughout the entire heap. The side-by-side -side experiment really proved everything. When we tested this technique in a controlled experiment, the results were just, honestly, undeniable. We built two identical compost piles, same size, same materials, and the same starting moisture. One pile was aerated by turning it every few days. The other was left untouched, except for those perforated pipes laid horizontally through the base and center. Within just a single week, the pipe-heated pile climbed to 60 degrees Celsius and stayed there steadily. The turned pile, on the other hand, fluctuated constantly, dropping heat and, well, requiring more labor to bring it back up. By the third week, the pipe-heated pile showed a richer color, greater moisture stability, and much more advanced decomposition. 
that was the moment it became clear. The Zestinimar for in Dun Dao Rudin, the thousand-year-old method wasn't just comparable, in many ways, it actually performed better. So, to build your own naturally heated compost pile, you'll want to start by choosing a location that gets partial shade and has good drainage. This is honestly a pretty important first step. Next, start with a layer of coarse browns, about 6 to 12 inches thick, as your foundation. This layer really helps keep airflow open beneath the pipes, which is, you know, crucial for the whole process. Now, lay one or two perforated PVC or drainage pipes horizontally. For a standard backyard pile that's about one cubic meter, two pipes are plenty. That should do the trick. All right. Let's begin by adding layers of green and brown materials in the correct ratio. As you go, make sure to moisten each layer lightly, just until it reaches that wrung-out sponge texture. Now, build your pile up to the desired height, and then, finish it off with an insulating top layer of straw, cardboard or soil to help trap in the heat. From this point forward, the pipes really take over the job of heat distribution and oxygen flow, all you really need to do is check the moisture every now and then, and just sprinkle the surface if the edges start to dry. Scaling the method to any garden size is, honestly, pretty straightforward. For small piles, say, around one cubic meter, one or two pipes work perfectly. Medium-sized gardens, well, they really benefit from two to four pipes placed in two or three layers through a pile, that's about two to four cubic meters. Now for large gardens, it's actually best to divide compost into multiple smaller piles, rather than trying to manage one massive heap. Smaller piles tend to maintain heat more reliably and, yeah, they let the pipes operate efficiently. No matter the scale, this system is flexible and forgiving. As long as you keep the carbon to nitrogen ratio and moisture levels just right, composting really does become nearly effortless. The finished compost that, honestly, surprised even me. After about 6 to 12 weeks, the naturally heated pile produced compost that was dark, earthy, and crumbly, with a structure and smell that really signaled high microbial diversity. The internal temperature stayed consistent, avoiding those extreme highs and lows you usually get with turned piles. The results came faster, were more uniform, and required only a fraction of the labor. This method isn't exactly a shortcut, it's more like a rediscovery of something gardeners once knew really well. Microbes don't need interference, what they need is stability, airflow, and steady heat, and the pipe system provides all of that without the constant turning we were taught was necessary. Your new composting reality, well, it starts right here. This thousand-year-old technique changed the way I compost forever, and honestly, it can do the same for you. With balanced layering, mindful moisture, and naturally heated airflow, your pile becomes a living engine of decomposition that works around the clock. No more heavy turning. No more temperature crashes. Just reliable, rich compost that strengthens your soil and boosts your yields. If this method inspired you or maybe taught you something new, make sure you subscribe to Crop Corner for more deep, practical gardening wisdom. Share this video with fellow gardeners so they too can discover the power of naturally heated compost. Your garden will thank you. And... Sakur Panhe Ya E. So... Will... Ya Your Back.